BMW 2 Series Coupe. <laughs> Just looks like a pig in a blanket or something. Um, yeah. Hello and a very happy new year. My new year's resolution was to go for chocolate, which lasted for a grand total of, as a Jamil, drum roll please, 57 minutes. And Sabbath resolution was to use no hair gel and that lasts about 12 minutes. So I think, I think I'm winning. Today, we'll be talking about some of the most hottest EVs to be released this year and a little bit ahead as well, including the Polestar preset and an electric Lamborghini. Crazy, right? My name is Ali Haji and soon I'll hand over to Saba, Mr. Aston Martin himself. This is Behind the Wheel. New Year means New Year's resolution, and if you're a car nut, it also means new cars. And it really is a surprise, or is it a surprise, that all these cars are electric? It pretty much feels like all manufacturers are rushing towards the electrification of their cars, and there is some awesome stuff coming up over the next couple of years, like converting a VW Golf into electric and calling it the VW E-Golf. What was that? Oh, there we go. There's a, there's a VWE Golf and a Corsa E as well. Okay, well, it looks like some of them are just literally converting some of their existing cars into electric, but there are some really, really cool ones coming up in the next couple of years and beyond. So, what have we got? First one is the Cupra Born. Cupra, since it was launched, has had something of an identity crisis. Originally, the Cupra was a batch applied to the high-performance versions of the Seat Leon and the Ibiza, and it was Seat's equivalent to VW's GTI or Audi's S and RS or Merck's AMG. Then the suit of Barca kind of said, you know what, Cupra needs to be its own thing. So the badge, an odd intersecting pair of prongs that looks like either like a Klingon weapon or the dinner fork of the gods, was applied to a high performance version of the Seat Atika SUV. Subsequently, Cooper became a brand in its own right, launching the strangely appealing, uh, which I like, the Fermenter crossover, which you can't buy with Seat badges, and striking out as Seat's electric and high performance brand. Rather like a sun sunburned version of Volvo's Polestar, now, Cooper's job is to introduce electric power to the Spanish motoring scene, and is starting with this, the Cooper Born. Aside from the slightly beak-aligned nose, uh, or beak-like nose, with its angry-looking headlamps and neat little Cooper script debossed into a slot on the leading edge, it's pretty obviously a Cooperized version of the VW ID3 electric hatch. The two cars look all but identical in profile, but um, they share many things uh, at the same time, like battery, same electric motor, same little base, and much of the same interior as well. And I think it looks pretty cool. Super excited for this car. And then again, Cupra again, the Cupra Tavascan, which is an electric SUV uh, that's on the horizon. And it will look a lot like the striking concept car that you see here when it goes on sale in 20. And thanks to details such as the aggressive headlights, the rakish roof line and a full width rear lights uh, on the boot lid. I think it's pretty cool. Quite, 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 like, quite like this car, to be honest. And there's the electric Lambo. Lamborghini has also announced that the second part of the 2020s will be focused on a battery electric propulsion uh, vehicle with the first full electric car to arrive from 2025 and by the end of the decade. And also there's the Polestar Precept, which is uh, the Swedish brand uh, coming from Volvo, uh, which previewed the uh, production version of its Precept concept with the Polestar 5 Saloon scheduled for launch in 2024. First revealed back as a kind of a 2D model in, 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 in April, the Precept is now a striking fastback model that's around 4.7 meters long the 3.1 meter wheelbase 
that's close to a Merck S-Class in, in many ways. It's all but certainly based on some variant of SPA2, the next gen of Volvo developed large vehicle platform uh, stuff. And although we expect more information on the cars, makeup in terms of techni technical stuff, um, we will be seeing all that through their videos that they're releasing on YouTube in terms of the journey of this car. Uh, what cars are you looking forward to this year? Let us know in the comments and we'll look forward to hearing from you. Sabah, over to you bro. Right, uh, time to wake up everyone uh, for the uh, cars I'm looking forward to in 2022. Now we've got the electric cars out of the way. Uh, very much uh, an exciting year coming um, for in 22. I think a lot of car makers have delayed the launch um, because of semiconductor issues and supply issues. So um, the, the big car I'm looking at, obviously Italian, uh, the new Maserati Grecali. Um, no one's really know, knows what it's going to look like. It's actually based on one of my favorite SUVs, the Alfa Romeo Stelvio. Uh, should be coming out uh, summer of next year. It's going to have really the Alfa Romeo range of engines. So it's going to have a two litre hybrid. Uh, not interested in that. Um, I'm really hoping they're going to come out with the three litre V6. Um, who knows, but that's going to be a good looking car. Uh, smaller Italian SUV. We don't really have one apart from like the volume stuff, like the Fiat's and stuff. So to have a to have a Maserati small SUV, I'm really really looking forward to. Uh, next up, uh, my new workplace, if I've measured, um, Aston Martin's Valkyrie. Um, this has actually been in production or, or in in build for years now. I think it's been what three years, I think. Um, just to recap, Aston Martin's Valkyrie is a, a collaboration between Aston Martin and Red Bull Racing. Unfortunately, that collaboration has now ended, but they did enough work together to get the car sort of in its final design phases. So it's got a, um, a V12 engine, revs to 12,000 RPM, uh, built by Cosworth, um, an engine specialist uh, that used to be a Formula 1. So that's going to be a very, very cool car. Loads of downforce, ultra lightweight, really just a race car built for the road. The way you sit in the car, you sit with your legs in front of you rather than below you. So very, very excited for that. BMW 2 Series Coupe. <laughs> um, just looks like a pig in a blanket or something. Um, yeah. So uh, current M2 owners who want to change for a new one. Yeah, just cancel the order. Uh, looks horrendous and ugly. It's going to be worse than the current one in pretty much every way. Uh, Comes guaranteed. Moving on swiftly from that. Uh, one car I'm really interested in is the new Chevrolet Corvette. I'm not really used. To, I'm not really a fan of American cars because they tend to be built with cheese and uh, you know have a quality of uh, primer. Um, but the new Chevrolet Corvette Z06 and Z07. I'll say it in an American way because that's what they say. Um, naturally aspirated V8, um, the world's most powerful V8, atmospheric V8 ever, um, with 7 800 horse horsepower. Um, most cars need turbos to get to that sort of power or big capacity, it's less than 6 litres, which is very unusual for an American uh, supercar or muscle car. Um, not a fan of the Aero Kit, the Aero Kit looks crap, I'd have it without the Aero Kit in blue with silver wheels, good spec. I'm uh, gonna go on head on head with the 911. Um, I, don't, I love the Chevy over the over the 911. I think I'm not even a bit boring in comparison. Uh, it's a bit ugly, but I can get over that. I'm sure it drives really, really nice. Right, moving on from that. Um, probably Aston Martin DB11 electric car. Yeah, that's bullshit. <laughs> so, um, there's certainly I don't think there's anything electric coming from Aston Martin in the next year. Um, thank goodness. So, is it Jeep? Small car coming out. Yeah, small. Um, there's a lot of crap on <laughs> on a uh, journalist website. Don't don't believe everything you read because half of it's just rubbish. Not newspapers trying to create stories out of nothing. Um, so don't believe everything you see. Um, one electric car I will talk about. Exception. Um, very rare exception is the Lucid Air uh, that you've previously spoken about. I actually really like it. Um, oh my god! I know. Whoa. Not, the, not the fact that it's electric. I'll, I'll gloss about over that. But the fact that it's it's got a thousand and sixty five horsepower in a four four door sedan car, and it's got a starting price of fifty two thousand dollars, which is just mental. Um, you know, and the interior of the Lucid Air just looks phenomenal. Yeah. Um, you know, great quality. 
Um, it is an, a new EV startup, and the thing I don't like about EV startups is that they seem to, seem to come and go on a regular basis. But these guys seem serious. They've got cars on the road and they've got journalists testing them. That seems really positive, and I'd definitely have that over a Tesla Model S. So let's see. Um, Lotus Amira. This was actually a car I was considering buying. Um, if you don't know, I've got an Alfa Romeo 4C Spider, which is a similar sort of ilk to Lotus. Um, and the, the new Lotus Amira, it's a, well, the launch car is going to have a, uh, a three and a half litre, I believe, um, supercharged V6 uh, with a manual transmission. Very light, very pretty. Um, I think if you see it on the road, it's got very much supercar proportions. Um, so yeah, the, the Lotus Amira, very, very much looking forward to. I uh, can't wait to see one in person. I've never seen one in person, so I'm very, very curious to see how that's going to look. Uh, Range Rover. Uh, Range Rover. Have you seen the Range Rover, mate? The what? The new one coming yeah, out next year. Looks pretty good. It's all right. Um, I'm not. They've done sort of an evolution rather than a revolution, which yeah. I think they've played it very safe. Apart from the rear tail lights, which look crap. Um, yeah. So that. maybe there's a reason they're doing revolution rather than revolution because all of a sudden, if you make it all new, does it look rubbish? Um, the rear tail lights, not a fan of. A lot of people don't like them. Maybe I'll change my mind when I see them in person. They just don't look. So you've got this top bar and you've got these thin lights on the side of it and they don't look like they go together. Um, they sort of look like they've been hashed together and it just looks a bit odd. Rest of the car, fine. No, absolutely typical Range Rover. Uh, interior is largely the same as the old one, just everything's a bit more plush and the screens are a bit bigger. That's sort of how you make a new car these days apparently. Um, but that's going to be interesting because there's not many cars at the £90,000-£100,000 price point that are very um, aspirational. There's not many cars out there because you can buy a Mercedes. No, nobody goes out and thinks, you know, my dream car is a Mercedes GLC or an X3. No, nobody says that. Um, but people do aspire to own a Range Rover uh, at some point, so that's going to be interesting. Um, but Porsche. Ferrari 812, Competizione, basically just the 812, just everything turned up to, turned up to 11. That's going to be cool, probably one of the best sounding cars in recent history. Um, RDRS3, oh yeah, for the Chavs, um, the RDRS3 is coming out, 400 horsepower, basically the same engine as what it was before, but turned up in power. Not 62 is in 3.8 seconds, all you bell ends use launch control. Um, so, yeah, uh, I look forward to seeing you bomb up and down the Avenger Road in that in the months to come. Nissan 400Z. Uh, massive disappointment, doesn't look all that good. Um, twin turbo V6, 400 horsepower, driving rear wheels. Um, nothing particularly. Well, what annoys me is when car makers release an all new, all new platform car with all new engine, all new electronics, and there's not one thing that makes it innovative or better or unique in any single way. So this Nissan 400Z makes 400 horsepower, nothing particularly special. Toyota released a Supra with 370 four years ago. So nothing, or whenever it was, um, nothing particularly special there. It's not particularly light. Um, it's not got any particular cool technology, it's got a limited slip diff, but so did cars from 40 years ago. Um, look at an average interior. Um, what's special about it? You know, there's nothing, there's no unique selling points about this car. Um, it's sort of out of itself. Mercedes SL. A bit controversial. The Mercedes SL used to be like the pinnacle of sports cars. Um, but then in the last 20 years, well I'd say 10 years, it's sort of become an old man's car that sort of goes to golf. And then the AMG GT came out that pretty much sat in the same category, but the AMG GT was all of a sudden fashionable and cool and people wanted to buy it. And the SL sale just fell off the cliff. They've tried to renew the SL, so really it looks like an AMG GT. Um, it's got a proper V8 engine, which is great. Um, but are they trying to you know, the way they styled it is for a young person. Are they trying to get into a person? But personally, I would have just stuck with the AMG GT and made that, you know, stuck with the convertible. Because what's the difference? And someone tell me in the comments below, what's the difference between the AMG GT C, so the AMG GT convertible, and the new SL? Because I can't see the difference. <laughs> so, looking forward to hearing that one. Alfa Romeo Tonali, oh, how can I forget it? <laughs> so that should have been top of the list. Uh, Alfa Romeo Tonali, obviously the best car on the list. 
by far. Um, small SUV, it has been delayed because Jean-Philippe Emperato uh, wanted some more power out of it. So um, that's been released quarter three of 2021. Uh, 2022 even. <laughs> Um, that's going to be cool. 300 horsepower, probably. Um, they keep changing their mind about the power. Um, but it should be a very good looking small SUV. I, I'm going to put it out there. I reckon that will be the best looking SUV sub 40 grand. Let's see. Controversial, I know. But I quite like the look of the da Dacia or Dacia Jogger. Um, it's going to be the cheapest seven seater. And I love a seven seater. Um, that it's going to be released in the UK. It's going to start at 15 grand, which I think is, that's amazing value. It's actually called Jogger. Yeah, it's called the Dacia Jogger. Let's check, uh, petrol car. Um, one litre, three cylinder, 108 of your finest horsepowers. But I think it's just, that's great. You know, if you're, don't forget, we live in Leicester. Half the families in Leicester have got five kids or whatever. Um, you know, and I hate seeing crap poorly maintained Vauxhall Zafiras and Toyota Corolla Versos bomb around at me, you know, and they drive at me on a narrow road like they've got great tyres, which they haven't, they're all mismatching eco tyres that we buy part worn, and the brakes were changed about 20 years ago because they've got a maid who does MOTs and passes it, you know, even though it's a death trap. Um, I would love to see those sort of people in the Dacia Jogger, because it's affordable. Um, you know, I'm sure the North Korean something would be very, very low. Um, yeah, and you know what, uh, I would personally drive, probably a higher spec one than the entry level, but I would drive a seven-seater jogger, absolutely, and I'd bomb around with it, I'd be very, very happy. Uh, Ford Fiesta facelift, um, they ruined it, literally by just putting the badge from the bumper to the grill. So, that's a Ford Fiesta, uh, and that is it. Uh, but those are the cars I'm looking forward to in 2022. Uh, let me know what if you're looking out forward to anything uh, I've missed, uh, unless it's an electric car, in which case I'm not interested. Um, but uh, I hope you enjoyed. Thanks. Thanks, Ava. And so the advice is get a DC a jogger if you're brown and um, got ten kids. Uh, and if you're electric, you know who to call. Sava's the man. Uh, apart from the Lucid Air, I've got to agree with you on that one, bro. Lucid Air, I am seriously, seriously amazed by. I think it's a great looking car, and uh, certainly not a Tesla killer, but a Tesla rival. And funny enough, the guy that works for um, the guy that the guy that actually created Lucid actually used to work at Tesla, and um, it's kind of interesting symbiotic stuff going on there. But so yeah. basically, you stab him in the back. But basically, mm -hmm. he, he, he just he just grabbed Elon and just. Kind of shattered him. Yeah. Um, so stay tuned um, and let us know in the comments what cars you're looking forward to next year or this year even. And uh, we'll see you then. Take care, guys. Bye. -bye.